Welcome to the Even Better Podcast, where your host, Seneca Waugh of Your Clear Next Step, brings you exciting content about making communities better by helping people get even better at work. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Seneca Waugh, and this is the Even Better Podcast. This is part of our ongoing mission here at Your Clear Next Step to help us have even better work days so that together we can drive home safer and we can help contribute to even better communities. I am delighted here to welcome on our podcast, we have Demir Kavkusik with us. Demir, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very glad to be here. This is such a joy. So for those of you who are joining us right now, if you don't know Demir, I had the delight to meet Demir. He caught my eye in a conversation. I had been invited to engage with some folks over at John Deere in their women's reach program. I'd been invited to to speak or to arrange for a speaking opportunity there. And Demir was part of the planning committee for that. And I was so struck by his passion for the women's reach program. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on just a second here. Why are you so passionate and so involved in the women's reach program at John Deere? How did this happen? And how did this guy with this unusual name show up in central Iowa in engineering in a women's reach program? We have got to talk more because I've got a weird name too. and, And it's all unusual for this Midwestern space and you're in engineering and you're talking talking about a women's reach program, help me out here. And so Demir was gracious enough to spend some time with our team talking about some topics around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in that conversation as well, I learned a little bit more about his story and invited Demir to be part of this podcast, because I think that part of his story here and and the topics that he has is his title for today's session is five ways to impact through inclusivity. It's just so powerful. Damir, will you, will you just jump right in? Will you tell us your your story? Sure. So thanks again for having me. I'm very excited to do this. I was excited from the moment we had talked about it and uh, now we're here. So my name is Damir Kavkusik and I am a product engineer with John Deere in Waterloo, Iowa. I was born in the former Yugoslavia, currently in Croatia, hence the crazy name. And I came to the United States as a young child in 1997 as a refugee, because if you know your current events, there was a lot of war and infighting in the Balkans in the 90s. So starting life over with next to nothing, I grew up as an only child in a single parent household in the glorious state of North Dakota and in Fargo specifically where I had a magnificent role model in my mother who worked multiple jobs to support us. And she achieved a master's degree in business all the while raising me on her own and instilling her work ethic and perseverance, even against great odds. So I went to school at North Dakota State University, go Bison, we're big uh, sports school up there. And I majored in industrial engineering and management and had my first foray into involvement and learning of value of working with a diverse group of people on projects and bringing in that inclusivity. And then after graduating, I worked as an engineer for a smaller company in North Dakota. And then I moved to Iowa, where I am today in 2017, to work for John Deere. So bring us up to the present day. I, as a naturalized American citizen, I feel comfortable stating that I have achieved the true American dream. Even in these rough times we're in, it's still possible. And although everything was earned, I live every day feeling fortunate to be where I am in life. Throughout my engineering career, I've been able to obtain multiple U.S. patents. I'm currently pursuing my MBA through the University of North Dakota. I'm involved in my community. I proudly serve as an ally of diversity and empowering voices at work. And I feel very grateful to work for companies such as John Deere that allows me to do those things. On my personal time, I like to do traveling and road trips, explore nature through hiking, find interesting places to eat, keep up with science and tech, work on my cars, go to car shows and sporting events and try and live life to the fullest because we're here and why not? Why not? Just, I just love that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So there's so many things about your story are, are so fascinating. One of the things that that strikes me immediately is that we share. So my grandparents were immigrants from Finland 
and they've settled in Massachusetts. They didn't make it all the way to, to North Dakota. That's so fascinating to me, like North Dakota. But wow, so North Dakota, and you're working on your MBA at North Dakota and multiple patents, like, whoa. Congratulations on that. So in the in the field of what can you can you share any like of your cool? Ideas? Sure. So if you look up my name in the US Patent Office, they are there for whatever reason. It wasn't by choice. Sometimes things just happen. And I was in ag career path. So I've worked for egg companies ever since I got my first job. And in this company, I work for makes uh, small ag equipment. And in order to basically preserve our ability to market our, our stuff and to, to sell it to the customer and to protect it from other competitors taking it, the company that I started with before Deer wanted to patent those designs and ideas that we had. So without getting in too into the dirty details, basically the patents revolve around uh, products that we offer that go on combines, those uh, big harvesters you see out in the field, as well as uh, the headers that are attached to the combine, uh, that big, big swath thing that picks up crop. Depending on where you are, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, the patents are to protect the idea of feeding the crop through the header into the combine, expanding the header capacity because of the design of how it functions, how it closes, and how it moves the crop into the combine itself. But the biggest part of that that I'm most proud of is before my patents came through, we didn't really have anybody on that team that dealt with patents. So not only was I able to gain my names on those patents and be the originator, I also was able to work with patent attorneys, review all the patent drawings, review all the documentation, read through it. It was some of the driest reading you can imagine, all legal speak, but it was great because it, it opened up another door and to see how that side of the world works. And I think in general, I always want to do things that are a little uncomfortable, a little bit foreign, you know, as, as a foreigner myself, to try and discover how things work. And in this case, being able to execute things from start to finish and, and having that in my back pocket. Now at John Deere, they have a whole group dedicated to that. And, and basically the engineering that goes into it is, you know, the ideas come through and then they get passed on to the patent folks and then they work back and forth. But I was able to do it all, all by myself, talk directly, send the emails, all that kind of fun stuff. But to make a very long story short, it was an engineering idea that helped improve crop throughput within the machine and increase the capacity of the grain on the combine. That's amazing. So what I'm learning about you, and this is not something that I, I knew before, but it's consistent, right? So I did know about you that you hold your, your mom up as just a, a wonderful role model. And she was an example of someone who said, we're going to do this and then went and did it. And you have lived your life in a way that says, I'm going to do this. And then you go and do it. So you're a patent holder because you said, I'm going to do this. And then you went and, and did it. Mm -hmm. And so as we talk about these examples of impacting through inclusivity, these are things where you said, I can do this. And then you went and, and did it. And they are things that you do not just once, but they're things that you do every day. I yes. think that, right. This is, this is where I, I think this transition that, that I'm going to make into the, the talking points and in, into these themes is there are things that you have been through in your life that are amazingly courageous and that are amazing. And, and some of our listeners might go, well, wow, I, I'm not a patent holder and I, I didn't go through war and I'm not, I, I didn't live my life as, as a refugee coming through this country. I'm not a naturalized citizen, but I do have a, a mom who's a great role model, for example, or, yeah. or maybe I, you know, I, I, I did go to college or maybe I'm working on my MBA. But, but what you're going to talk about are things that we can do on a daily basis where we can set our mind to, I'm going to do this, and then we can follow through and we can actually do it. Is that a fair way to, to transition? I think I, I couldn't have put it any better than you just did. Outstanding. All right. So let's talk about this. <clears throat> Five ways to impact through inclusivity. So one of the first things you talked to me about was, was showing up. So, so let's just, let's unpack that. What do you mean by, by showing up? So Showing up, we have to show up uh, every day in life. Some people may find a reason to have days or weeks where they just feel like going through the, through the motions and not really making an impact or being present in whatever they're doing or reaching out and participating in groups and in events and projects that you 
feel like you may be scared of doing, or you may feel like you might be an outcast, or you may feel like that, oh, they don't want to include me, or me showing up may give the wrong message, or there's so many excuses you can make. So what's important is just as you have to show up uh, every day and be your best self because you only have yourself to rely on, only you can join those teams and join those groups and better not only yourself, but by including yourself in these groups like Women Reach, or including yourself in volunteering, or involving yourself in places that are very unusual to you, or that are surrounded with people from different races, different cultures, genders, everything that, that goes into the diverse world that we have today. It's important for to you to basically force yourself to not think about what could go wrong, or what what why shouldn't I do it? But just go, allow yourself to blend in and listen and, and become involved and then take the take take all the benefit of of, of being there. And and literally just showing up and going there is the first step because if you're not there, nothing else can happen. And you started this in college, right? You you were doing this in you yes. had experiences with this while you were in undergrad. Yep. So when I was in college, first year was kind of putting your big toe in the water, trying to figure out what the temperature is. And the nice thing about college is it provides you a lot of outlets to do new things. When when you're in high school, you, you may do sports, you may do groups that are very to your school centric, right? And you don't really get to see different cultures. You don't really get to see different people from around the world or around the country. And college is the first place where you now have that exposure. So for me, I joined the Society of Automotive, Automotive Engineers to increase my knowledge base. And I, I love the automotive industry. I involved myself with the National Society of Black Engineers. I involved myself with women's engineers. And I involved myself in doing stuff like being a radio DJ. And a lot of those things you might think, if the opportunity is there to join, I always thought to myself, I'm just going to do it and see how it goes. And if I, if I feel accepted, I will continue doing it. If I don't, I'm not going to try and force it. And what was a real wonderful kind of outcome is no matter which one of these groups I joined, everybody was accepting. Like nobody said, you can't come in here or you don't belong. And, and to kind of circle back, the reason why I did it is I felt like the only way I can gain that perspective outside of myself is to join groups and teams that weren't what I was used to doing mm -hmm. and, and understand from their perspective what it means to walk in their shoes, what it means to run the organization through their lens rather than the traditional or, the, or the, what we consider as normal. So seeing a perspective from women engineers or Black engineers or somebody that's more creative and, and arts-based, like the music side of it, rather than the, the technical side in engineering. So I think in college, that was the first exploration and first foray because it was available. And I decided to do it. And I'm so glad I did. Yeah. Well, and I think that's going to tie to the, the second one. So let's, let's go there. We're, we're talking about five ways to impact through inclusivity. And the first one is to show up. And the second one, though, that once you get there, you can't you can't just show up. You got to do something more. And and I think what you alluded to is to listen, listen. So say say more. Sure. So I think we have two ears and one mouth. Again, more cliches. Sometimes listening can gain you so much more than just talking, because through observation, we can absorb a lot more information about the world around us. It seems very simple, but it's, it is really true. So when you first arrive in any of these groups, or if you join up, it's important for you to, to sit back and absorb as much information as possible. And then when you do reply or you do interact, don't be a talker, actually be a supporter. So if you say uh, to somebody, I, you know, I support your, your point of view, or I wanna be inclusive, words don't really count for much. You actually have to understand what, what their perspective is, where they're coming from. So that's the listening and observing part. And then actually, when you, when you give them that support, do so as a secondary, when you have actual action. So if they have something that they need from you, be there for them and do it. Because 
you can't, you can't tell them that you're going to do something and then not follow through with it. And you can't do something that is your idea. And that is what you're trying to impose on them. Because at that point, you're not listening and observing. You're actually telling and, and projecting. And, and so when it comes to listening and observing, you have to sit back, understand, use your ears, and see what they're actually trying to tell you and what they need from you. And then follow that up with that action based off of your conversations with them. Because sometimes we'll, we'll, I think we get caught up into getting into a, a I want to say that I'm participating or I want to I want to be represent representative, but you end up kind of taking over. And the initial point of, of the discussion and of the, the, the fight, so to speak, gets lost because, and this is a big word we use nowadays, uh, appropriation is that you kind of now turn their struggle or their needs into your own rather than, than by being supportive and actually listening, like I said. And when you keep doing that, you can build that trust up, you can build that relationship and, and you, can find, you can accomplish what you're trying to do. You bet. And that's going to take us into the third topic here, which is to, to build a personal relationship. So first we show up and then we listen and observe, and that's going to take us into the third one, which is to build a personal relationship. So, so unpack that one for us. Sure. So when it comes to inclusivity, you cannot be inclusive if you don't understand who you're trying to include. And so in the motions that you take when you, li when you listen and observe, what you're trying to do is, is understand where that person is coming from and try to connect to them on that human level. So we always get into this idea of that we have of somebody, of the story that we create. And as time goes on, the more you unpack of their story, and then you start to understand like, oh, I have this in common with them, or they think like this as well. And you can use that to better communicate with them. Because when you're, when you're again, going back to the previous point, when you're observing, you're trying to gather as much information before you can act. But in order to act, you have to build that personal relationship so that there is trust, so that there is confidence that the things that you say, the things that you do are coming from a point of equality and balance with the person that you're involved with. So when you go do uh, group projects or you, you join teams or you do things that where people don't look like you or don't necessarily have the same mannerisms or different cultures, you can find out that you have a lot more in common with them if you build that relationship with the person, because we've kind of started going away from, from being good to our neighbors because we don't talk to them. So those neighbors didn't change. They're the same neighbors. We just don't talk as much or we don't accept because we don't want to connect on a, on a more stronger foundational level. And so you start distancing yourself and now you, you, you can't have that pathway communication. So now they're, they're opposites to you because you don't have that connection. Well, in reality, when you dig more into it, you have a lot more in common and you can accomplish a whole lot more when you have that connection and that trust and that relationship. And they can end up becoming really important people to you because not only are you now connected with them, they're connected with you so they can help you in your own personal growth just as you can help them. Absolutely. So as we're thinking about inclusivity and, and how this ties, so if you're one of our listeners and you're just joining us, you got to hit pause and go back to the beginning because we're here with Demir Kavkusik and we're talking about five ways to impact through inclusivity. And the whole idea here is, is creating more inclusive spaces and, and that we can do that right where we are right now. And it's, it's about showing up that I was the first one is, is showing up and, and being intentionally present and then closing our mouths and listening and opening our eyes and observing. And then from there, building a personal relationship and that personal relationship, my, my dad used to talk about the decline of the American neighborhood with the rise of the automated garage door opener, right? When, when we could push from inside our car, we could push the button that opened the garage door opener and we could drive into our garages and then push the button and it would close our garage and we didn't have to talk to our neighbors anymore. We didn't stop mm -hmm. the car and, and visit with our neighbors. We lost that that neighborly connection and we, we lost the ability to, to build relationship there. But whether it's whether it's with our neighbors or or with the the people that we're observing or trying to build connection with, there's still that 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 intentional let's figure out what we have in common. Let's find 
but let's find something that we have in common. Let's find a common ground. Let's build a relationship on, on something and, and start from there. And then we can discover that we can, we have something that is shared of importance. Maybe, maybe we both have siblings. Maybe we both have, you know, nieces or nephews that are important to us. Maybe we both like the color blue. Well, let, I mean, let's start there for heaven's sakes. Maybe we both like travel. We both like cars. We both like sports. We both like North Dakota. I mean, there's gotta be something. Mm -hmm. For sure. And, and the only way you can find that is by having that open line of communication. And so if you don't reach out, you don't have an excuse as to why you don't have that connectivity. So to, to begin with, you have to be, you have to actually be willing to go and talk to that person or go join that group. You have to, to be willing to listen and to see what they're, what they're all about. And then you have to be willing to, to say, okay, I have some sort of connection to this person because nobody is, is completely opposite. And so once you get to that point, you can, you can have that relationship. And I, and I wanted to touch real quick based on the, on the idea that, so when my mom was going through her struggles of being a single mother, we weren't very well off. It wasn't without anything, but we were definitely not high middle, high class kind of stuff. And uh, and you have people that may look down upon you or may may treat you in a different way or may not believe that you can accomplish things. And for me, seeing her struggles to gain that respect, just to just to be in the same room wasn't enough. You know, just just to have ideas wasn't enough. She had to execute the plan. She had to follow up. She had to do above and beyond because she was trying to con create that connection with, with the people around her to help them understand that I'm just like you. I may have that name. I may have an accent, but I'm smart. I have ideas. I have the self-starting attitude. I have the push. And then once those people see that, once they see, oh, she's a mother, you know, or she, she cares about the success of the company or she cares about the success of the people around her, you, you gain that trust and you gain that belief. And to me, that, that was an excellent way of, of seeing somebody who had it even worse than I did. I don't think I have an accent. And I was young when I came over to the U.S. I got a, a North Dakota, don't you know, sometimes they slip through. <laughs> but seeing how, how much harder she had it it, it, it gave me an opportunity to kind of follow in the same footsteps and understand it takes time. It takes asking those questions. It takes building those relationships. And sometimes you're going to have people that are hard headed. Sometimes you're going to have people that don't want to work with you, but you still need to find a way because you can't change your team members. You can't change your neighbors proverbially. Of course, you have to, to do the job at hand and her ability to do that uh, helped set me up for, for my success and helped me understand that inclusivity is a part of building that, those relationships. Absolutely. That's, that's just phenomenal. What a, what a great role, role model she just set for you. That's, that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. So as we move on to, to number four, there's also the awareness that we're going to, we're not always going to get this right. We're be aware that you'll make mistakes. So what do we, what do we do with that, Demir? So inclusivity is, especially in 2022, it is a minefield because you have to be careful about intent of what you say and how you say it. And it doesn't mean that you have to be sitting on pins and needles. You don't have to feel like you can't say anything. You have to just be quiet. It just means you have to be more thoughtful about what your words mean to somebody else. And again, if you build upon your previous building those relationships and being present and observing, you can understand what works with people and what doesn't. But you have to be aware that you, you will make those mistakes. But in order to avoid those mistakes, you have to ask those questions and, and stumble along the way. Now, what's, what's a really popular catchphrase these days? Cancel culture, right? Cancel culture, in my opinion, how I see it, is the rejection of the idea that there are consequences to what you say and do. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't learn from what you're doing or what you, what you did, but a lot of that goes into did you observe or did you understand the audience that you were communicating with and, and saying, and what story did you tell yourself and what did you craft before you, you let those words come out of your mouth? So the main point is in inclusivity, 
it's a, it's a journey because you can make a mistake along the way, but as long as you're learning from those mistakes and don't become mentally paralyzed that now I can't, I don't qualify as being an inclusive person, then you're back to square one, right? So understand that you can make mistakes, you're human. Understand that you can fix those mistakes, that you can become better. Understand that those around you will make mistakes. And it doesn't mean that it's, it was a slight against you personally. It was something that they, they don't care about you or they don't want to be your, your partner or your supporter in anything. It just means that you need to ask those questions. You need to communicate and then get to the next step. So this is one I'm, I'm going to, we've got a little bit of time here and I'm going to ask mm -hmm. some tough questions on this one. Cause I feel like sure. if there's anything that we need more of right now in fall 2022, it is more grace. And it's been a tough couple of years. Maybe it's been a, a tough decade. I don't know. It's been, but it's certainly been a tough couple of years. And I feel like we are at a point right now where we just, we need grace and we need to give grace and we need to give a little forgiveness and we need to sprinkle a little more grace. And with, with your example of the cancel culture, there are pockets of our human population that are so unwilling to give grace. Like we're so quick to judge. And I'll, I'll just use this. We, this collective, we, I try really hard not to be one of those, but we we're so quick to to be unforgiving, to be lacking in grace, to demand that everyone else give us grace, but we're so unwilling to be gracious and to forgive and to acknowledge that, you know, we're human out there. We're, we're going to screw up. How, how do we, how do we go both ways with that, Demiro? Any, any words of advice on this? So I think it goes back to the previous point in building that relationship. I think when you understand that if you're able to make that mistake, other people can as well. And I always try and live life, again, super, uh, super cliche and very rudimentary, but golden rule. Right. You know, if you made that mistake, if you're in their shoes, would you want to be forgiven? Mm -hmm. Would you like to be given a second chance? Would you like to prove, have the ability to prove yourself that you're not that one statement or that one move isn't a representative of you as a person? And being able to understand that forgiveness is okay gets you at least to the to the doorstep of understanding, okay, I can forgive this person. I can understand where they came from and, and why, why they said what they did or why this happened. And if you can understand that, then you can become more accepting of everybody as a whole and you can feel more accepted as well. Because if we are graceless and if we're stingy about being together as a community, if we're stingy about letting things go and not understanding that tomorrow's a new day, there will be more mistakes to be made, you get stuck. And so I think the only advice I can give is put yourself in that person's shoes and ask, would you, would you want to be forgiven? And have you been in a situation where you wish you were forgiven or that you may have done something or said something that, you know, you really appreciated that you were forgiven? And then, and then use that mentality to forgive that person to go to, again, a better place and a stronger relationship to whoever did whatever is to happen. Whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great words. So let's get to point number five, be willing to act and go through with it. Okay. What are we, what are we doing here? Uh, so the one thing I want to bring in on, on this specific topic is we at John Deere have this group called Women Reach. And this group was formulated to basically empower women for lack of a better term in basically a men's world, you know, agriculture as a whole is very male dominated. And that goes throughout the entire industry. John Deere isn't a non-inclusive place. It's actually very wonderful. And they've done very wonderful things to, to, to change that mentality. And one of the things they have is women's reach. So it basically places women in positions of gaining that understanding and gaining that development, those development tools to better themselves as employees in whichever the department they are, whether that's engineering, supply management, quality, leadership, whatever it is, to go to the next step and to have those, to know that they're not alone, that they're, they can go to the next level in, in their career and, and progress. So now you may ask yourself, okay, Demir, you're, you're a man. So what, what are you doing in a women's reach group? And 
my mom again was that was that huge impact because I saw she had to do a lot of this on her own. And a lot of the headwinds that she had was because she was a woman and because she was trying to become a manager and a leader as a woman. Now, today, she's the CEO of the Housing Authority in Ottumwa, Iowa. And one of the things that she had in her life were both male and female that, that helped support her and, attempt, and to give her advice and to give her the ability to, to get to that next level through her merits, through her knowledge, and, and through her skills. So when I joined Atomo Women Reach, I, I did so because I saw there were a couple of guys that had joined and they said, hey, we have this group. We think you'd be great because you have a bubbly personality and, and I, the events that we do are, are good for development for the employees and for yourself. And so I decided to join and I was one of three guys. So now you're, you're the minority in a women's team. And so I wanted to force myself to see what is it like to be on the other side of that. And so going back to, to be willing to act and go through with it is knowing that this is not what was prescribed as your descriptor of, of who you are. You have to commit to actually do it. You can't just say that you're going to do it. You actually have to do it. And so when I, when I went ahead and did that, it was, a, it was a wonderful experience for me because number one, I got to learn project management skills because we put on different development events. And the, the best part is not only was the group open to both male and female, the events were open to the entire factory. So not only did women get, gain advantage in it, males did as well. Now, it was still slated as women's reach because their primary objective and mission statement was to give an opportunity where there wasn't an opportunity before, or there weren't faces that represented that opportunity, where you didn't have the, those women in that management or in supervisory roles to kind of give them that exposure. And so I joined because I want to be a net supporter mm -hmm. and I wanted to be the person to help them succeed. So this is kind of like the learning experience you have, right? So I'm going to stick through with it. And that that's how, I mean, things happen for a reason, right? That's how I met you because we had a, an event on emotional intelligence. Long story short, to, to be willing to act and go through with it, going through and joining Women Reach here in Waterloo was something that I may not have done before, but even now I can, I can think back and think, I'm glad I did it because being inclusive means that you put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Being inclusive means that you're willing to do the actual act of, of going and choosing to be supportive and choosing to be a wingman or to be a, a net supporter because you're not there to necessarily be commanding or to appropriate what they're trying to do. You build those relationships and you realize that you can be an ally by just doing it, you know? And so the last thing I want to, um, I want to, point I want to make on this is we just had our appreciation luncheon. And for next year, uh, we were already looking at signing up people and, and doing it. And I noticed that on the open positions was there was the vice chair for the events group that I'm in was open. And then across the board, again, it's all, all women's names are up there, right? And I was deathly worried that going above and beyond and not just being a member would make it look like I'm trying to take over. I'm trying to do something, right? Okay, how can I make the biggest impact without feeling like I'm, I'm taking something away from somebody or I'm taking their position or I'm taking their ability to better themselves? And so I had talked to the current chair about ideas that I had and wanting to include all the other factories that have women reach to kind of communicate with each other and to be able to put on these events and to, to give women across every single factory and understanding that, oh well, yeah, this group does is this, oh, this can be beneficial to your development. This can uh, progress your career and these development events can make you better overall. And in our conversation, he said, well, have you thought about becoming vice chair? I said, uh, not at all, because this is, even though I, I, I was chair uh, in a time, this is a much bigger group. This is a lot different dynamic. I just want to be an explicit net supporter. What can I do to make sure that you feel heard, that I'm doing everything that I can? How can I volunteer? And she said, oh, no, I think you'd be wonderful for that position. And I heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that no male had ever been 
a, a, a chair or vice chair of these groups. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's something new. And like, <laughs> the, the good news is, is there was support basically from the top of the, of the leadership of the team all the way down to the subcommittee, because I think sometimes you have to have that different face and different voice to kind of bring the entire group together and to give them, and this isn't, it's always seen maybe as a bad word of describing, but validity that what they're doing is for everybody. And so being, having that diversity in there can make, you know, other team members realize, okay, well, this is actually, this is beneficial for everybody. And, and I think, like I said, for me, seeing that perspective from other people's shoes, being willing to act and actually go and do it gets you in that position of forcing yourself to be uncomfortable, forcing yourself to build those relationships, forcing yourself to, to know that where, where you fit in everything all plays a role in making that impact into being inclusive. Because if you don't do it, you won't make any progress and you won't make an impact on inclusivity and, and the world will stay status quo. And what, what's really sad is you don't see it in the bigger picture because what you do in this moment and whatever it is, it, it may be women reach for me. It may be something else for somebody else, but there's always a return, maybe not directly, but indirectly to you as a whole, if you help be a net contributor to inclusivity, because if, if you put yourself in a position to be an ally, to be somebody who's there to, to support at a certain point in time, that support will come back for you as well. But the way I look at it is if the whole of society moves up in the, in the right direction, we all become better. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. To be right. I so appreciate you. And I, that realization of a rising tide lists all boats, right? That's, that's what we do. If we all just do a little, and, and your point there about inclusivity, the irony there about joining a, a sort of segregated group and making it more inclusive is just really quite lovely that, that you're, you're being inclusive and you're, you're making an impact to inclusivity by by being willing to be the, the minority in a group so that you can represent and, and you can you can help be an ally for that group. And, and in turn, it turns out you're making that group even stronger. And it's it's just it's really, really lovely. It's just what a great story and, and what a great way to to demonstrate that showing up, you, you, these are your your five examples of of making an impact, right? Showing up, even if it feels uncomfortable, listen, like close your mouth listen and observe and pay attention and building relationships. There is no way that that person who was the chair, there's no way that that person would have said, Demir, you'd be great at this if you didn't have a personal relationship with that person. They, they wouldn't know to say you'd be great because they wouldn't know who you are. So mm -hmm. building that personal relationship, you probably made some mistakes along the way and probably, you know, had some missteps and had to figure that out, but you kept showing up and, and you're willing to stick through with it, even when it's uncomfortable. So those are your your five examples that you're you're offering to us as as listeners and and learners in this and that you're you're living out on a daily basis so thank you for that Demir. for sure so this wouldn't be the even better podcast if i didn't ask my my question what's making you even better these days for me what's making me better i hate to say a very generic thing but is is trying new things and putting yourself out there to keep trying new things so for me what's making me better is taking my mba classes and and learning what there is to to you know continuous learning basically i had joined a group within john deere that basically engages the factory salary and wage we actually had a car show so we were able with the car show we had a dunk tank for uh, dunking our leadership that the employees can do for basically they swipe their their card and the donation goes to farm rescue and we were able to raise two thousand dollars at fifteen dollars a dunk basically to make the factory a, a, a smaller place right to make everybody be together and what did i take out of that is connecting with people under listening to their stories so that makes me better being a part of women reach having our events there and and learning from different speakers learning how to manage those projects and then my current relationship with my girlfriend 
is an everyday kind of learning experience and it makes me better because I learn to be a better listener, right? When I, when I, when I don't listen, I learn to be a better communicator in my bond that I still have with my mom is listening to how, how her day was and, and what happened in her day today that I can apply for my own knowledge and, and building. That's kind of the long and short of it, of, of what I do to, to be better today. Fantastic. Thank you. Tamir, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it, Senka. This was a great opportunity. Hopefully somebody can take something out of it and, and join that group that they were afraid of joining or were, were creating that narrative in their head that they can't do something, that they go just ahead and do it. And when they actually do it, commit to it and see it through. I have, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. So for those of you who are listening, you heard that call to action. Hope that you will take that action. And on behalf of all of us here at Your Clear Next Step, we hope the rest of your day is even better. Thanks for listening. Thank you for tuning in today. The Even Better Podcast will be back with more content soon. But in the meantime, subscribe to our podcast or check out our website at yourclearnextstep.com for more information. See you next episode.